So how many of you know what a fractal is? Raise your hand. Okay, well, I'm going to just read for you one definition. Fractal, a curve or a geometric figure, each part of which has the same statistical character as the whole. Fractals are useful in modeling structures such as eroding coastlines or snowflakes, hmm, seemingly too unrelated yet somehow related phenomena, in which similar patterns reoccur, recur at progressively smaller scales and in describing part, uh, partly random or chaotic phenomena such as crystal growth, fluid turbulence, and galaxy formation. So if you think about at the heart of what a fractal is, it's saying that there is something that on the surface seems chaotic and random, but um, the, more you, the, the more you look at it on an increasingly smaller and smaller scale, you see the exact same pattern as the larger scale. And the, the, the more you see it um, from a greater and greater distance, you still see this very same pattern. So something that, as you're standing there sort of looking at it, it looks chaotic. But in your mind, you know that in this scale or that scale, sort of how we zoom in on a microscope or we zoom in in a lens, if you do either in either way, you get the same pattern over and over and over. So you imagine this thing that's behind me. If you look at it, it seems random. But what if you were to go into each one and you saw the same pattern over and over and over? Or as you would move back, you kept seeing the same, same pattern. So in a sense, that is a fractal. Now what's interesting is that Let's go back to the definition, a snowflake. A snowflake is almost described by a fractal. The coastline, fractal, I mean, you look at all the images of the fractal, and so we're gonna put the whole, you know, too coincidental to be chaotic theory, that's right there. So that's one thing that we're, that we're building on. The next thing is, look at a leaf. Look at a leaf. I'm actually going to go grab one of my favorite uh, leaves. So you hold on. Okay. So aside from raping a little tree, my, my poor little people tree can handle it. Can you handle it? So what we find is that this, this shape of this leaf, and the actual shape of the tree can be represented by a fractal. Then we can mathematically write down that we can translate, in a sense. As much as I can speak to you in English and I can write this in Korean or transliterate it in Korean, I can also translate this into math. It's a fractal. Too coincidental to be random. And I want to go back to the building blocks of life. DNA, you know, RNA, those proteins. If you talk about protein, is it, you know, life around us is a series of complex proteins. Of course, we're so, we're so bossy that mammal proteins are so, you know, complex that uh, it takes an entire human genome project to decode it, which we now have, based on what Watson and Crick said, that there is this bit of protein. Now, what's interesting is that we're finding that those, the physical structure, this, you know, the double helix, you know, the spiral of DNA, we say it's a building block of life because it gives out instructions. But for me, I, I fail to see all of the different sort of philosophies of science um, connect where that building block leaps into life. So you have physicists and they have their answer. You have biologists and they have their answer. You have chemists and they have their answer. You have philosophers and they have their answer for what, where, you know, how do you get from what we can represent in, my, in math and science on paper to dimensionally, where you get from that double helix to life. 
what I'm saying is that I think it comes down to a fractal. As simple as, you know, if you put a chain, the very specific way that your lysine and lysine and, you know, all these amino acids, the very specific way that that fits together, that is simply just, that the instruction is fractal. That's what it is. That's what I'm saying. That's my big theory. That, as much as this is, I'm not saying it's my big theory. What I am saying is that the facts are already out there, and I wish that people would be a bit more straightforward about explaining it to people this way, because the way that we make each, each discipline so complex and so seemingly arrogant that we give it its own ego, um, the chemists have their own ego, not just chemists, but chemistry because of the ego of the chemist and thinking that we have all been able to define life. After all, is what we're, what we're doing. The chemists have their definition of life. The biologists have their definition of life, you know. And they all seem very fractured, chaotic. But if you step back, you again see a pattern of fractals. Again, another pattern of fractals emerges here that where, you know, chemistry breaks off from physics, where, you know, biology breaks off from, you know, where medicine breaks off from, from biology, where biochemistry breaks off, you know, you find that there is this continual fractal that they grow, that they even this in spiral around as part of the way that knowledge, that this knowledge of fractals um, goes into these different disciplines, but yet you find this repeatedly wanting to know more detail and at a greater scale about the very bits of knowledge that we have in geometry. How can we express it in this language? So in a sense, we're trying to unravel our language more and more to produce more knowledge about ultimately the self. And that in itself is a, a fractal, a fractal of knowledge. So we, we're, working, we're working with fractals on so many different levels here that even that becomes a bit too coincidental to be just chaotic. That we are ourselves just fractals, as much as this leaf, as much as <clears throat> the tree that it came from, as much as even the pattern of the, the, the branches will form from that tree, so too might we be. That there is a fractal, there is a, there is a, an instruction, a protein code, just one, a very simple one, just one. It's the most efficient. And this says, build a liver. But it's just a fractal. It's like a small chain of proteins. And yet that small chain, if you if the way it is, like, you make that into a fractal, you get a liver. Lo and behold, you get you know, an entire body. Think about it. Now you think about this. Think about the fact that the galaxy not just our little Milky Way, not just our little planet, not just, you know, not just one solar system, but the galaxy repeats that fractal relationship. So in a sense, what we're searching for is not a specific knowledge, but a, a knowledge of relationships. To see that uh, we're trying to define infinite. Because when we're looking at scale, we have zero, that took us a while to come up to come through with zero. And we have infinity. And in principle, a fractal is the same. At zero, at scale zero, and at, at, at infinite scale, you get the same pattern. See behind you. You get the same pattern over and over and over again. It's, it's the most efficient way to, to transmit. Information. Just imagine if we wanted to, if we found the conditions for life on another planet, in another, you know, part of the part of the universe. If we wanted to efficiently produce life on that planet, we would we could just send a small chain of DNA. And through this relationship of fractals, life would in principle spawn. The next question is, does that mean that we're playing God? I mean, is that all God did, did is to come up with a chain of four? It said, reproduce that. <laughs> and at this scale, then it says, you become a liver. 
and then you can, you can, and at that scale you become you know a brain at that scale. We gotta go for you.